So hello and welcome to this video on the awesome Pamela's new workout from ALM Busy Circuits. So quickly, what is this module? It's eight outputs that can be a range of things from gates, LFOs, envelopes, stepped random voltages, and all of those can be influenced by Euclidean parameters, random skipping, delay to create swing, voltage offsets, phase offsets to push things and create custom feels or push, say, a higher on the offbeat between this fall to the floor kick. A really powerful module. Here's the PEXP1 expander, which we'll look at later. But I've got a patch set up and let's quickly go through what's on here before delving deeper into these features. So on the first track, I'm triggering a kick. We can scroll through and see the timing divisor or multiplier. Clicking and holding, we have that the settings for that output. So this is a gate, 100% voltage level, we can attenuate an offset for the voltage, but I have no need here. Width, pulse width of the gates, we can use this as skew LFOs as well. Phase is zero, no delay, that's a divisor for the delay, so creating a divide two. Timing delay, we can create custom kind of 16th note swing. Random skipping, the amount of Euclidean steps set to zero this is off the amount of triggers within those steps and rotation of that euclidean pattern we can loop which is great if we've got random skipping on or stepped random and you want to grab it and loop what's just happened we've got a slop which kind of a humanize creates timing offsets it's fantastic for creating custom grooves we can hard mute we can save that setting or load the settings now on channel 2, I have a snare. And while I won't go through every single parameter, any important ones I will show you the changes. So this is divide 2, but what we've done is offset that phase by 50%, so it's on beats 2 and 4 as opposed to 1 and 3. We've then got a hi-hat. Again, clicking and holding. This is one times the clock, so it should be the same as the kick, but again we've used this phase offset to push that in between. You can create custom swing. This is great for making things flam and putting them right where you want them. I quite like it early, but let's just keep it straight for now. I then have some 16th note triggers on 4, that's just a gate, we can see that flashing away. But what we've used then on channel 5 is some stepped random to change the length of these notes. So again, same timing division, click and hold, the wave there you can see is this kind of stepped random. On the six output, I created an LFO, which is again a random LFO. Then I have this going into a quantizer just off screen, coming down into my synth voice. And I have some triggers on seven. You can hear this isn't a simple division or multiplication, so click and hold. We're running times for the clock, 16th notes. Our wave is simply a gate, 100% level, no voltage offset, width is 50, no phase offset, no delay. But what we have done is create some Euclidean patterns. So if I take the triggers down, this is 
this is just triggering all the 16s, but I want a 16 part pattern. So 16 16th notes, one bar pattern. And I want five steps within that. Now I can rotate that rhythm. Notice the placement in the bars changing. I liked it where it was. And because I had one output left, I'm going to use this gate on channel eight, which is a divide four. You can just see it's lasting a little longer. So move these out of the way. And this is going to modulate the snare. So you can see lots of features. That's a super quick overview. So let's get into some more detailed sections, looking at things like LFOs, creating beats, creating melodies, the Euclidean parameters, the expander, the CV inputs, the modifiers. There's loads of cool stuff we can do with this, including saving it all as well, either by part or by bank, which is ace. So let's take a look at LFOs. You can hear I've got some noise and an oscillator through a filter. And the first output, Set to divide free of my tempo. No phase change, no width change, no offset, no level adjustment, and a triangle wave. This could be a gate or a square. Adjusting the width could be like pulse width modulation. Shorter or longer than a normal square. We can have triangles, signs, an envelope style shape. Come on to envelopes later. And stepped random. One cool thing with the random, let's just take our modifier for time up a little bit. We've just heard something we like, because this is entirely random. We can hit loop. And how many beats we want to loop. You can hear that's caught a two beat loop. Back to random. One beat loop. Back to random. Four. So it's great being able to grab these loops. This works when we're randomly skipping gates and all sorts of stuff. It's a fantastic feature. We will come back to that though. Let's take our wave back to a triangle. Take our modifier back down to a divide three, just because that's the timing I like for now. The width control can shift these LFOs and this will actually skew the triangle from a saw to a triangle to a ramp, but in infinitely variable rather than a wave select. So as we go towards zero, notice this LFO rises faster than it falls. Back to zero. It's a saw wave. 50% width will be the triangle. Higher than that, we'll work towards a ramp where it takes longer to rise than it does to fall. This also works on the sign. This skewing isn't exclusive to the triangle. So wave, sign, width. So a more curvy saw, a more curvy ramp, and I'm clicking to select, I can scroll through that level of the menu, it's only one level deep, no kind of diving going on, and I click on a hold, they're the two functions you would need to know. We can also make use of, and I'm going to speed this up to do so, 
the delay to create swung LFOs as well. So we set a delay value. This won't do anything with our delay divisor. So notice this now feels swung. At zero. This keeps going as we increase delay time. We're getting swung LFOs, it's great for creating what feels like a more custom shape. And you can assign CV to this as well. We'll look at CV inputs more exclusively kind of later on on their own, but and you can see there we can set it to CV1, CV2, or set a value itself. We can also randomly skip these, so the random skipping isn't just for a gate. If I turn this up, so click. And this is a percentage, a probability that the output will skip on that particular cycle. So you could have swung things, you could have skipped things. And we could loop this. So let's go to loop. Loop the last beat. There's not a lot going on there, let's go back. Loop the last three beats. And we've got this new loop with random skipping in there. Let's take random skip off. We can make Euclidean rhythms out of these LFOs, so just like we would a gate. So let's, how do I do this? Let's go a little bit faster. Euclidean steps, let's say eight. Euclidean triggers, say five. So we can create Euclidean rhythms out of our LFOs. Which is pretty nuts when you start to think about it. This works at slower tempos as well. I just sped the tempo up for the sake of hearing it in a more kind of rhythmic fashion. So that's delaying, skipping and looping LFOs, Euclidean LFOs, creating swung LFOs without delay. What we can also do is influence these things by the CV input. So I'm going to plug in this second LFO and turn this on so we can see it. You can hear a lower part has started swelling in now, just a lower tuned oscillator. But we can start to have some real fun if we take that second output and start to adjust the phase, which we can do with CV. So we could phase offset this. And you can hear these are swelling differently. You can see the purple and the green trace moving differently. But let's assign phase, and as you go past 0% or 100, it comes down to the CV ins, to CV input. And I've got a slower LFO, this is a divide 12. There, let's plug this in. Clicking and holding now gives us a menu for the CV in. We can offset the CV in's value, attenuate it, and actually see it there as well. We've got a CV input meter from 0 to 5 volts on that first CV in. So if I start to attenuate, they're going to stay closer together, but we're still going to get some phase offset. Completely unattenuated. these pushing and pulling out of sync. It's really fun to play with an LFO over phase, whether that's for gates and rhythms, Euclidean rhythm settings, speed settings or phase. 
So that's LFOs. Let's have a look at the envelopes. So let's take a look at the envelopes. And you can see the first three outputs are going to the data scope, green, blue, purple. Going to my outputs, they're all set to times one. I'm going to build up a basic kick drum, tom, basic synth percussion kind of thing. Clicking and holding. I'm going to set the waveform of this first output to be the envelope. The other two already are. So let's plug in our level to the VCA. Now what happens with the envelopes is the width control becomes a release time proportional to the length of that cycle. So you can hear and see on this green trace a low percentage is a little click. Higher percentages are longer release times. Now when I'm building a kick, I tend to want a longer VCA envelope, a shorter pitch envelope, and another short envelope to modulate the tone and timbre somehow. So let's leave that there for the VCA. Go into output two. I'm gonna play around with the width. I'm gonna send this out into the vault per octave. going to tune this down a bit. And it's a little bit high, so I'm actually going to adjust the level and then adjust the width. Now I'm going to use the third one to modulate the tone of the kick. And here's sweeping that parameter. So let's plug this in. Again, click and hold to go back out. Output three, click and hold. Let's first adjust the level play with the width so it gives us a nice tight little click so let's look at creating melodies I'm using one output that you're gonna see on the green trace on the Mordax data going to a mutable instruments braid triggering some triangle sounds that I've processed through VCA and let's set this off So click in to go into the output settings, got the random wave. Now you might think, well, that's no good for melodies, but that can be great when we loop it. So let's scroll through and loop two beats. We can then go and attenuate the level of the output. Basically, if we're creating melodies, we can use these random steps and then loop them. We can attenuate them. We can also offset the voltage, which serves as a coarse tuning. Now, we can get creative because you can apply other functions, such as the Euclidean settings, which will be non-destructive. So let's just listen to this loop and get it in our heads. scroll through Euclidean steps eight steps how many triggers do we want per step and this is going to be kind of how many bits are active so you can hear when one is active in that eight step Euclidean part that's all it lets through all eight lets everything through Go 
back, let's adjust the level. Going back to zero, that's what we had, that's our looped random. Four beats. Says so our new loop. Let's adjust the level. Go back to Euclidean. This is now sixteen steps of information. little glitches from my quantizer further down the chain but you get the idea we can create these euclidean patterns that non-destructively work over these loops and that's one output we've got seven other outputs on the core module to do other things so we've looked at the general features and then creating melodies lfos and things in more detail but let's look at creating beats and then more specifically looking at creating grooves, something with a bit more feel and life than just clock divisions. Just to save time, I've got this set up, but I'm gonna go through each output. I'm gonna affect these and do different things as we go along. So let's turn some of these elements down. On the first output, we're set to divide two. So this is playing on beats one and three in the bar. This is just a gate, nothing more. Output two is set to divide two as well. However, I've set the phase to 50%. What this lets me do is create that boom, snare, bass, snare, back and forth. If this goes back to zero. You can hear we're pushing that snare around. Let's take some compression off as well. So that's pushing the snare into place. Third output, also divide two. And this is where I want to start injecting some feel and groove and something more than just a basic kind of division of time. This is a clap. If I start playing with the phase, we start to get some flams. That'll do for now. The third output is times four, and this is simply triggering a hi-hat. Let's add a little swing to this. So we're gonna set a delay divisor of two and a delay. Just a little bit of delay. And let's set a little bit of random skipping as well. Output five, also times four. This is triggering a little snare sound. Now I'm gonna set this with the same delay. Doesn't have to be perfect, I think it was 11, but I'm not too precious whether it was exact or not. Now, let's have a look at the slop feature, which is like a humanize. And just listen to... <laughs> that timing goes all over the place, but just a setting, even of just one. If I just solo the hi-hat and the little whoopee sound. Here it just pushes all over a little bit. And that's what I want. I want this looser feel to the groove. Let's add some random skipping and a little bit higher setting to that. Moving on, I've got an output on six. Let's 
which is this dirty little sample. This is running at times four. Everything's set normal, but we've gone in and created a Euclidean pattern. So we do this by setting an amount, an amount of Euclidean steps. I want 16 steps. And how many Euclidean triggers do I want in that step? need to set the delay up at this point I'll also show you how you can load and save so we can scroll to the end and we have load and save settings however from the main menu and I found this one much more useful go into the tempo click and hold we have a global reset load and save so save no just takes you back out. Uh, save this in bank here. So this whole setup, the whole kind of setup of Pamela, all eight outputs are now saved in that bank. You can also save each output as well if you want a quick division or LFO setup on a single output that you want to pull back. So as well as all the divisions, gates, LFOs, all the different stuff this thing can do, We've got timing modifiers as well. So if on output six, which has this LED jack in, just to make sure you can see it flash blue when it does something, we can scroll all the way through these divisions. It'll do a divide 512. I mean, it's nuts. The amount of stuff available on this is ace. But we've got settings for just being on all the time, just being off all the time. We can also have gates that are just at the start, do this fire once when we press start, and ones that are at the end. Now let's stick with the one at the end. This works great, and it's just a little gate symbol towards the right to the end of the cycle. It's the end of this thing running. And when I hit stop, this will flash. And that's great as a reset. So if I'm playing with this eight step sequence, which I can manipulate live, so let's do that. Now hitting stop, and having this actually fire off, will reset that back to the right place. So I'm gonna press play. And that stop signal means that this will reset the sequencer properly. The start gate, is good for when you want this to flash and just send out a gate or just do its thing as it starts. Good if you just want to make something happen once and as soon as this starts going. We can have this just stay on entirely, which gives us a run signal. And we'll look at a sequence with a stepper acid and using this run to create a sequence that way. So let's have a little bit of acid. So first up, the stepper acid from Transistor Sound Labs is killer. Really great sequencer for acid and a lot of other things as well. But what's actually happening? I've got my kick and snare, which you can see on one and two. Simple quarter note and a divide by two pushed 50% off onto two and four as we have making beats earlier in the video. That's simple. Then the sequencing is from the stepper acid, both the rhythm and the pitch for the little acid line. I've got external clock set on the stepper acid and the PPQ of the clock we can set to a whole manner of things, which is great because it means it talks to other things nicely. We'll stick to 24, which is a standard PPQ, pulses per quarter note. It's how many sort of little clock ticks come through per quarter note of time, which is 24 is a MIDI standard, 24 PPQ. These are analog clocks, so we can set them to whatever. This is expecting 24. So if I scroll through to output five, you can see all I've done is set a times 24 and plug it into the clock input, which is this sync section on the input of the stepper acid. What I've also done is set the modifier for step six to be on. And what this will do is wherever we stop this, we can see where the 16th note after beat three there, it will reset and run perfectly in time. 
without this, it isn't going to start even though we're sending it clock. So by putting this in, and you can see we're in time, one, two, three, four, and wherever that is, So having that modifier for on means we can create a run signal, which is great for a whole manner of devices in and out of the rack. So let's look at working the other way around and syncing Pamela's new workout to something else. In this case, the stepper acid. I have my clock and my run and stop signal. So clock goes into clock, run goes into run as you would expect. Because there's no run signal, neither the sequencers play in, I've stopped it, nor is Pamela's workout. But the tempo will still come across and you can see very quickly, it snaps up and down to tempo. So we would click and hold from the tempo. If you're scrolling through your outputs, get to tempo, click and hold. You set the PPQ, pulses per quarter note, 24. That's what this is running on. This could be other things. One, two, four, eight, 16, 24. We'll go up to 48 as well, or dependent on this CV, but let's leave that 24. Great for it talking to other things. Run signal, yes or no. With that set to no, the run will simply be a reset. It's not wanting a run signal, just a single tick will reset the whole thing. So if run set to yes, PPQ setup. Pamela's just playing my kick and snare on the first two outputs. This is simply cycling up and down the filter. It will follow the tempo. So you could see it smoothly follows and quickly catches the tempo. So we can sync with that clock and run or reset input really easily to other devices. So let's take a look at the CV input. This is still slave to an external device with a previous patch. Now the CV ins, the first CV input expects a positive voltage between 0 and 5 volts. The second CV input is bipolar, but we can scale both of these with offset and attenuation depending on what we're doing and where. Most parameters on Pamela's workout can be influenced by CV, which is ace. I've got the third output into CV1, and I'm gonna set this as a CV to modulate other things. It could be an external source, but why not use one of Pamela's extra outputs? So I've got triangle wave LFO. Let's divide this by 12. I'm going to output four, which is my hi-hat. I'm gonna to scroll to the end, and here we've got these modifiers for on and off, creating the run style signals, the get at the end, the get at the stop. But assigning this to CV1, you can hear the rate of that hi-hat being modulated. Now pressing and holding, because we've assigned it to CV, gives us offset attenuation and the chance to see the incoming CV, which is really useful. I'm going to attenuate this and then offset that value so you can hear we're ragging that around but we can apply this single CV input CV1 in this case to more than one thing so you can hear that I've got an LFO moving the filter Let's take the envelope off the filter and just have the LFO. And this is actually output 8. 
So this is the LFO on the filter. Let's make this be influenced by the CV. CV input one, so click, then click and hold. Let's just attenuate this right down. Offset this. So I've offset it to the value that I want, and then I'm going to add some attenuation, bring some level back on that CV in. So we can hear the LFO change on the filter, and we can hear and see this hi-hat be ramped around as well makes it really powerful and actually patching it back on itself kind of feedback patching is great really nice way to work things like phase can be changed and timing like i said nearly all the parameters can be affected by a cv input rather than an arbitrary value that you set so this is an electron analog four four voice synth with some great effects I've got a simple pattern playing, but let's check out the expanders, which is running this whole show. The eight outputs on Pamela's new workout are doing drums and modulation. I'm taking MIDI out of the PEXP1 expander into the electron, and we're going to see when I start Pamela, this will start, it will reset. This whole thing, including the electron, will be in sync. And that's the beauty of PAMS. So here we go. Very nice. There's a little jam video with this and a bit of a wider shot so you can see some of the drums, but it is in sync, it resets. It works great with the electron devices. So to finish on, let's just go through the PEXP1. You've just seen it controlling the analog four from electron taking the MIDI out from Pamela as a great stable clock source, starting, resetting, and keeping the time on an external device. We've also got gate outputs that stay times four, times two, times one, and divide by four of your clock. So regardless of how we set Pamela, we have these extra outputs. And this is great because it means we don't have to use up the kind of eight outputs for the kind of boring clocking stuff, if that's how you want to look at it. Keep all the creative, fun, Euclidean, skipping, custom groove kind of stuff on these eight outputs, and we can feed them back into the CV ins and use this for the kind of run of the mill utility stuff. Really great expander, and that's why I went with the PEXP1 and the MIDI out as well. We also get DIN out for clocking any devices that take DIN sync. There's one more expander, the PEXP2 that has a 3.5 mil socketed MIDI clock out. And we're starting to see those kind of mini jack MIDIs, which work with things like the BeatStep Pro, some of the COG devices. And there's a buffered times 24 and run output jacks. So we get a 24 PPQ clock and a run output to sync other devices. Thanks for watching this video. Hit like and subscribe. Go support me on Patreon if you want more of this exclusive content. All the extra good stuff those guys get for supporting. And check out Pamela's new workout. It's a stunning bit of kit. It's pretty amazing for the size of it and how easy that kind of single layer menu is. Fantastic. Go ALM.